lay. Crowned by the mighty royal palace, this once forbidden city is now under siege from tourists. But there must be something more to this land, beyond the famous high passes and lakes. To find out, we had to leave the tourist trail. Our destination was the mysterious Changtang, stretching almost 1,600 kilometers across Ladakh and Tibet. Changtang takes its name from the Tibetan word meaning northern plateau. One could simply travel the entire length of Changtang before the British drew the boundaries of India. In fact, much of the ancient silk route of traders from Central Asia passed through these very lands into Tibet and China. As motorcycle adventurers, our objective was simple. Right across the Changtang to find how close we can get to the borders with Tibet. But as travelers, we were curious to experience the lives of the Changtang nomads, whose culture, traditions, and way of life remain unchanged for centuries. This will mean a journey of over 1,000 kilometers crossing high passes, glacial lakes, rocky trails, and deep river crossings in the most remote parts of the Himalayas. With no roads, no mobile network, and no backup crew, calling for help will not get us an answer. It's a dangerous journey in a land still lingering in the previous century. Tibetan Buddhism is a central part of everyday life in Changtang. And the signs are seen everywhere. As prayer flags atop houses and high passes or as old relics hidden away. But the most common sight is of people counting their prayer beads. The monasteries or gompas are painted in deep maroon and white. austere colors of their religion. The main feature inside these gompas is a statue of Padmasambhava who introduced Buddhism to Tibet in the 7th century. Beautiful altars are placed with offerings to the Buddha and other divine beings. Murals depicting the teachings adorn the walls. And old Thangkas, Tibetan Buddhist paintings on silk, are carefully displayed. A giant prayer wheel is placed outside these gompas on which mantras are inscribed. Spinning this sends blessings into the air to all living beings. The nomads of Changtang were originally followers of Bon, an old animistic religion from Tibet. Today, they're all practicing Buddhists. A hundred years back, these lamas would arrive with yaks, horses, and the customary umbrella. But the 21st century lama needs a 21st century transport.
For two days a year, this quiet village comes alive with monks, pilgrims, tourists and Changpa nomads for a very special festival. Welcome to the Korsok Kustor, held at the Korsok Kompa, with a history of over 300 years. The word Kustor quite literally means sacrifice of the 29th day. The central element of this festival being the supernatural charm dance. The charm is a ritual performed by monks and accompanied by music on traditional Tibetan instruments. Considered a form of meditation and an offering to the gods, the music is said to put the monks into a trance when enacting these ritualistic dances. The monks dance in rhythm, keeping time using symbols. Almost without warning, figures of saints and demon-like beings emerge from the main temple and descend the long flight of stairs down to the courtyard. Their appearance is accompanied by thundering blasts of horns and their steps by the slow rhythm of drums. There is no separate stage and the dancers are performed right here in the main courtyard of the monastery. People are seated in the galleries, many crowding all available seating on the ground and even the roof. The different masks represent beings called Dharmapalas or divine guardian spirits. The monks enact stories from Buddhist teachings. Every story concluded with the victory of good over evil. One can almost witness Padma Sambhava, who unified the ancient born beliefs with Tantric Buddhism through these dances. The masks themselves are all made by hand and probably hundreds of years old. Considered important Buddhist relics, these masks are passed on from Lama to Lama one generation of monks to the next to continue the sacred dance. We were told stories about a Buddhist monk who had done the impossible. Achieve immortality. To find out more, we must travel deeper into Changtang to a little known village called Chumor. Less a village and more a border patrol outpost, the route through the Changtang Valley to Chumor has not changed in centuries. Chumur is one of the few villages that lie closest to the Tibetan border.
the only other visitors were Buddhist nuns making a pilgrimage. The immortal monk we wanted to meet seemed in no mood to talk. He was mummified. He is our Guruji, our Rinpoche. There is a mask on his face. His hair and nails are still growing. His reincarnation, the current Rinpoche, will visit the monastery once in three to four years to cut his hair and nails. The Lama had died in the 70s with a deep wish to continue living in this monastery forever. Next to the mummy is something even more startling. This is a feat of an eight-year-old child. The rest of his skin is hung upside down. The story goes, there was an epidemic in Chumur. The Lama cast a protective spell against the disease through this dead child, thus saving the village. Ancient Tibetan texts written on handmade paper, older than the mummified Lama himself, are stored away in a cave behind the monastery. The old scrolls are rarely open for the fear of them turning to dust. Could the old Lama have used a spell from one of these texts? For the Changpas, evil spells and good spirits go hand in hand. This is an annual nomadic festival or a mela. The Changpas and their horses from all the villages in this valley have come together for something special. Evil spells, which could signify bad weather or the loss of their herds, are embodied in these little idols made of yak butter. They are placed on the ground and Changpa horsemen compete with each other to strike these idols using a stone. This symbolizes destroying the evil spells. Everyone takes part. At every round, the winning horseman is presented with the Kathak, a Tibetan religious calf. <laughs> this goes on many times until all evil spells are released through the breaking of these idols. Good spirits can also be summoned through pujas or Buddhist rituals. Here, this teenage girl was refusing to go back to school. Instead of a counsellor, the local lama is invited to perform a puja. Tormas or figures made of yak butter are elaborately made by hand and an altar is set up. The lama proceeds to chant prayers beckoning the good spirits. The young girl, quite reluctantly, takes part in the puja.
Once the rituals are complete, the tormas are offered to the good spirits in the four cardinal directions surrounding their home. We later heard that she still refused to return to school. High mountains flank the natural borders between Tibet and India with the Indus River flowing through the Changtang Valley. Your mind is set free by the vastness of these landscapes. Every scene you chance on seems like a painting. Far away from the comforts of our couch, we knew these lands were tough and you would have to be a very special kind of being to survive here. Like the Kiang. The Kiang or the Tibetan wild ass roam freely without threat in these wide open spaces. Larger than donkeys, but smaller than horses. They are shy creatures and run away at the slightest alarm. And as we found out, they can run at almost 60 kilometers an hour. distant land, the best way to understand a culture is to go to their wedding. As nomadic people, the wedding is a simple affair with tents pitched to accommodate guests. Oral traditions in remote regions like the Changtang continue to play a vital role in preserving their culture. A Changpa wedding is incomplete without a lore spawn or a wedding singer. There are many Baxton Clue or wedding songs to be sung during the ceremonies. Today, the lure spawn are a rarity, with most youngsters happier to be DJs playing electronic music.
Towards the end of the ceremonies, blessings are sought from the high lamas through their portraits. And copious amount of chang are drunk together to celebrate. Chang is fermented barley beer, an alcoholic beverage with roots from the Tibetan plateau. Traditional toasts in ceremonial yakpata pots follow and there's no escape. Every drink must be consumed to the bottom. <laughs> Changtang is a vast expansive land of the Changpa nomads. Though always on the move, the nomads return to their village for a few months in a year. This was one such village vacated by its residents during summer. You can identify a Changpa village by the unique stone enclosures which house goats and yaks. Their houses are typically built of mud and stone sourced from the mountains that surround them packed well together to form strong walls. The roof is stacked with grass, which when dry is fodder for the sheep in winter. The Changpas store vast quantity of sheep manure and yak dung throughout the year, baking it in the sun. Back in the days, the yaks were the favored mode of transport in these rugged lands. It's easy to see why. Yaks are tough animals, a true representative of the Himalayan mountains. Heavily built with sturdy legs, the dense fur insulates them perfectly in winters. Crossing frigid glacial rivers is no problem at all. When not in camps, the yaks are out grazing in the mountains. Unlike horses, yaks do not eat grain and need to be taken to fresh grass every day. Herding yak is difficult work with these stubborn animals having a mind of their own. Rusis or herders use a traditional catapult called urdo to sling stones at any yak which lingers too long. <laughs> Male yaks can be quite aggressive and have ways to show off their dominance. Oh yeah, yeah, he's getting ready to charge. One way they do this is to scrape the ground with their horns and throw mud into the air. The pits they dig can be up to three feet deep. Weighing over half a ton, if you see one, make sure you stay away. Few wild yak remain, with most being domesticated. 
ਫਸਲ ਮੇਰਾ 125 ਪਰ ਕੋਈ ਚੱਡੀ ਤੋ ਬੜਾ ਬਾਕੀ ਕਿਧਰ ਬਾਕੀ ਪਾੜ ਹੈਗਾ ਜੋ ਬੱਚਾ ਦੇਣਾ ਦੀਸ ਯਾਕਸ ਆਰ ਬੀਇੰਗ ਰੇਅਰਡ ਇਨ ਵੇਸ ਅਨਚੇਂਜਡ ਫॉर ਓਵਰ 2000 ইয়ারਸ Using yak spur we can make sweaters carpets and also rebo tents which we live in Did you see that Did you see how we pulled it iske barabar koi nahi bakri se bhi zyada uncha par rehna The hair comes right off and when tied together can be rather strong So you don't need uh, tie downs you just have this and this is quite strong जंगली कुत्ता ने काटा इसको जंगली कुत्ता ने काट दिया ने इधर इसके बगल में फिर ये इधर ये द यक्स हैव प्रेडेटर्स टू द हिमालयन वुल्फ और जंगली कुत्ता ओ दैट्स हाउ यू डिफरेंशिएट ऑन दिस फीमेल को ना ये ज्यादा मैं कोई गाड़ी जाएगा नहीं तो ओके The other more famous herder one usually finds in these parts of the Himalayas are the pashmina goat shepherds. Each of these herds number hundreds. Pashmina shepherds have a name. They are the changpas. to find them we had to travel to their oldest camps on the borders with tibet and like an oasis in the desert we find our elusive changpa camp we were invited for tea i have been a changpa here for over 20 years i am 34 years old now and started herding as a teenager helping my parents My daughter's name is Searing and she is 2 years old. The Changpa's lives revolve around these Pashmina goats. Here in Changtang, these goats are called Changra. From a herd of about a 100 goats, we get between 5 and 6 kilos of pashmina a year and every kilo of wool fetches us between 5 and 6000 rupees i don't know how much wool is used to make a shawl we don't know how to make them here yes it is quite less considering how hard we work for a whole year but this is what we receive this new born is 15 days old 15 The Changpa's herds are always on the move up and down these mountains. First we visit Dhim Chok village, then we come here. And later we climb up to Umlingla. Umlingla mein jayenge. The Changpa's tent called a rebu is a simple home. Our kitchen is on one side and we have beds on the other. In the center is our stove which keeps us warm with a tall chimney to keep smoke out. We are Buddhists and carry our gods everywhere with us. My parents are in another tent close by. There are many Changpa families living in their tents near us. Today, I am resting and taking care of my daughter. My wife has gone to work with the grief. 
All of us have our own boats, and my sister has taken them out to graze. We take turns with the herds. The work the Changpas do is hard, and their way of life is to carry their tent and keep moving constantly. With more Changpas moving to cities for education and work, the ways of their life are slowly fading away. Yes, our traditions are dying slowly, and I feel sad about it. But I want to educate my children. It is important. Riding our motorcycle through Changtang was not easy. The high passes can be punishing. Halfway to Kela, a relatively little known pass, an avalanche blocks our way. You, you put it now? Yeah, dude. And Mundel Makil in a stone. This you step down. Okay. Come. There is nobody around to help. Rock, rock, rock. Yeah, see? Take me to when I lift the bike. Okay, hold on, hold on, go. Don't do anything. Don't do anything. We fought our way through over a thousand kilometers of this desolate and hostile landscape. That's it, buddy. Done. People here have long confronted the elements and forces of nature alone. This is Changtang, the home of the Changpas.